Hello and welcome to another Getting Started tutorial. In this tutorial I want to talk about the SLU Edge module from Tangible Waves. The SLU Edge is a kind of an envelope but also a detector of changes of an incoming signal and it creates variations on those changes. Let's go through the inputs, outputs and controls first. There is an input where you can put in any CV signal or even an audio signal and even a gate signal. And whatever is coming in here will be shaped by, by the SLU mechanism. Accordingly, there's a SLU output on the right here. There is a gate for triggering an up motion. So that means that if the incoming signal is going upwards in voltage and a trigger is on this input, then the SLU will do its thing. Conversely, on this input, if a input signal is going down in voltage and there is at the same time a trigger or a gate going down in this input, then the SLU will do its thing downwards. And the last of the inputs is a gate for triggering this, the SLU mechanism for a signal that is either going up or down. These two are outputs. This is the bus CV out and the bus gate output from the MIDI channel. On the output side, we have the SLU output, which is the shaped signal. We also have a trigger that triggers every time the incoming signal is either going up or going down. So it's a change detector. This is why it's called edge as well. So this is the edge detection. And also to, uh, one pulse that is sending a pulse for if it's going only up, it's going a pulse if it's going down. And here's a pulse that is being sent if it's going either up or going down. So I suspect that this will be the output uh, which, which be more likely a gate, whereas these are pulses which can be used uh, to trigger a drum um, sample, for instance. The LED here shows that um, the top LED is lighting up when the incoming signal is going up, and this is when it's going down. Uh, similar, this is the edge detection of when it's triggering a pulse either up or down. In terms of controls here at the bottom, you have uh, these three switches. The first one make the switch, uh, uh, the slew trigger on an upward signal. So at the moment to the bottom it's off. If I switch this to the top, then the slew will shape the signal as it's going up. And the other is when the signal is going down. So again, the bottom position is off. And if I want the slew to activate on the downwards trajectory of an incoming signal, I would have to put it to the upper position. As a slew is a bit of a rising curve or falling curve, you can change the shape of that curve to be either a linear curve or a, lo a logarithmic. Down here, you can change the slew time, which is similar as you have in an envelope, which is the change over time from the moment the slew is triggered to the when the output signal ends. So with this you can change the length and the slope of the curve. So that's basically all you have to the slew. It is a very sophisticated module and it can have many uses. You can use that as an envelope. So for instance, if you put a gate in here, then the slew can change the gate to have more rounded edges, just like um, an envelope would do. If you put a pitch in here, a CV a signal for pitch, then the SLU can actually change the pitch over time and create a portamento. If you put a continuous audio signal in here, then the SLU can detect changes in the rise and fall of the audio signal and can give you pulses. So you can trigger certain things when the audio signal is going up or down. So in the next section of the video, I will show different uses of this, always as usual in a musical context. In this patch, 
I'm using the slough edge as a kind of an envelope to change the cutoff frequency of this filter here. So whereas my oscillator is getting a CV from a keyboard, um, which is running a sequence, a random sequence, the slew edge will get a gate from the keyboard and will um, slew it or change it according to these two um, switches down here, which are currently on, so I'll turn them both off, and the slew time. So effectively, I can turn this into a attack decay envelope or into a just a decay envelope or just an attack envelope, depending on these two switches here. In the performance, I will then change the frequency of the filter um, and also the resonance to achieve uh, different um, sonic variations of the random sequence. There's also a little bit of drums going on, but that's just to give it a little bit more interest. So in this patch, there seems to be a lot going on, 
That is because I wanted to make a kind of a musical patch that utilizes the slew module to modulate the pitch. And the pitch in this case is driven by the sample and hold circuit down here. So it is a random uh, sequence of pitches. So the way this patch works is that the noise module provides random voltages from the digital out that are going into the input of the sample and hold module. The sample and hold module will then get a trigger from this LFO at the top here. So every time a trigger is coming from the LFO, a, that pitch, that is, or the CV signal that is coming in at that exact time, will then be sent out from the output until the sample and hold retrieve, uh, receives another trigger, at which time it will then send the voltage that it receives at that point. Because the voltages from the noise module are between 0 and 5 volts, so they can be any range, it's always good to put them through an attenu attenuverter or attenuator module, so you don't get too high pitches. So I'm getting the output into the at to at CV module, and I'm changing the range of sounds with this um, knob here at the bottom. So if it's all the way to the left, I will only ever get one signal or one pitch. So the output of these attenuator then goes into the input of the slew module. And the slew module will then do two functions in this patch. One function is to change the signal to give me a portamento between different pitches. So a slide up or a slide down or up and down, depending on these two switches here, as I've explained before. But I'm also using it as an edge detector. So you can see here that I have two cables, one in the pulse uh, for upwards changes and one in the pulse for downwards changes. And these are going into my drum kit module. So every time a pitch goes up, I will trigger a bass drum. And every time a pitch goes down, I will trigger a snare drum. So I'm using the slew module as a drum trigger as well. And that's, you know, Let's see how that sounds like. It's um, not something that I have any control over because it's all driven by random uh, voltages coming from the noise module. So the other modules in here are all around modulation and some variation of things. Okay, so the output of the slew module then is driving the pitch of the oscillator here. In this case, I've um, primed the oscillator to be a little bit higher up so that I don't get very, very low sounds, but I might get very high sounds depending on the knob at the attenuator here. One output of the um, oscillator goes into uh, the mixer up here, and the output of the sub-oscillator also goes into the mixer, so I can later add a little bit of a bass sound in there as well. I can mix those higher pitches and the lower pitches together, and they both go into a VCA. And the VCA is driven by an envelope, and the envelope gets a trigger also from the LFO that is also triggering the sample and hold. So this works just like a keyboard. Every time there's a change in the sample and hold, I get an envelope which triggers an um, amplitude uh, change here. The output of the envelope of the VCA then goes into a filter, and with a filter I can change the brightness of the sound, and the output of the filter then goes into my mixer here in channel A, and channel B is the output of the drum kit. So all in all, this is a bit of a musical setup where I have drums, I have a lead voice, I have a bit of a bass um, equivalent to it, although they're getting the same pitch signal. The sub oscillator is about an octave down. One other thing I added here to, for some variation is that I can change the cutoff frequency using an LFO, and that is a different LFO down here, so I can make it more bright. But I will change this over the course of the performance with the CV knob here. So at the moment I have a static cutoff frequency, that's only been influenced by my hand. And then later on, I will add more and more of the variation from the 
second LFO in here to get bubbly sounds and then going back to normal sounds. So that was the video about how to use the SLU module. If you like this video, please click subscribe and the like button. If you have any questions or comments on this, please leave a comment in the section below. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Please stay tuned for more videos to come in the future. Thank you very much for watching.